Lincoln Link Brown, a small-time goon, is being followed by two gangsters in a car, so he hurries over to a nearby taco stand. The gangsters, Eddie and Bunyan, exit the car, but just then two cops pull up to the taco stand, forcing the gangsters to stand down. The cops take a seat and order food, so Link uses the opportunity to head to a nearby payphone to call his sister, Foxy Brown, begging her to come pick him up. Foxy is hesitant about helping her goon brother but decides to come rescue him. Link gets back to the taco stand, trying to pull the cops into a conversation to keep them around. All this time, the gangsters are eyeing Link dangerously. Soon the cops finish their coffee and head out. Eddie and Bunyan see their chance, but just then, Link sees Foxy's car and manages to jump onto the roof to get in. Eddie also jumps onto the car as they are escaping, almost causing Foxy to crash but she throws him off into a nearby river. The siblings get back to Foxy's apartment, with Link grateful for her help. She demands to know why the gangsters were chasing him, and though Link tries to lie, he eventually comes clean, explaining that he borrowed 20,000 from some bad people and is unable to pay it back. Foxy is disappointed in her brother always getting into illegal activities, but agrees to have him stay with her for a while, making him promise not to get involved in anything while he is there. Link is stubborn though, listing off all the things he is not good at, stating that dealing is the only thing that can give him the lifestyle he wants. Pam is worried about him going to jail, but Link states that jails are where all the fine people are. Eddie and Bunyan report back to their boss all bruised, getting a cussing from Steve for failing the mission. The men mention a woman coming to save Link, but Elias thinks they are giving excuses. Their boss, Miss Catherine, thinks that the men were just careless and reminds them that Link stole a lot of money from them. They cannot allow word of his treachery to get around or it will tarnish their image. The men promise to clean the mess up and are dismissed. Catherine and Steve are revealed to be in a relationship. Foxy goes to visit her boyfriend Dalton, an undercover cop who has completed facial reconstruction surgery. The two decide to get frisky until a nurse interrupts them to give Michael his bath. Soon after, the doctor comes to remove the wrappings from his face to reveal his new features, taking on the identity of Michael Anderson. He wishes to get out of the hospital for a while to spend some time with Foxy, and despite the doctor not being able to officially discharge him until the following day, he sees no issue as long as Michael's boss Adams agrees. After the doctor leaves, Adams hands Michael all his new identification documents, as well as a letter from his department relieving him from his previous duties. He is angry as he gave two years of his life to undercover work for a trial that fell through because of jury fixing. Adams understands, but after the failed work, he must now live with his new identity. Foxy and Dalton leave the hospital, where she sees her friend Oscar dressed as a beggar in the streets. She watches as Oscar and other men from the local community watch group corner, chase, and eventually beat down a local gangster who has been terrorizing the neighborhood. The men then throw the gangster into a car and drive away. Foxy and Michael learn from Oscar that they have been driving the gangsters out of their community, and this particular goon will be shipped off to somewhere far away. Link calls his girlfriend Deb and learns that gangsters showed up at her place looking for him. Just then, Foxy and Michael return to the apartment, and Foxy introduces Link to Michael, but Link thinks something is off about Michael. He leaves the apartment to give Foxy and Michael some alone time and they make good use of it. After a while, Michael prepares himself to return to the hospital, and the two look forward to finally being able to be together after he is discharged. Later, Link is looking over an article of Dalton as a police informant when Foxy catches him going through her things. He thinks Dalton would be worth at least 20 grand and someone must have made a buck getting to him. Foxy gets upset, revealing that Dalton was actually a federal cop and not an informant. Foxy leaves the apartment for a while, and this time Link begins tracing Dalton's photo, having figured something out, and makes a phone call. At Catherine's office, Elias is completing a deal with Mr. Tedesco to transport some stuff, when he is summoned to Catherine's office. They have received a tip from Link that Dalton Ford is still alive. Elias thinks it's impossible as Eddie and Bunyan were supposed to have killed Dalton. Bunyan swears he did, but Elias shuts him up angrily. Catherine sternly urges the men to find and kill Dalton before he has a chance to open his mouth again. Before, she was able to take care of the jury, but they might not be as lucky next time. Elias then demands that Eddie and Bunyan take care of the job for good this time. 
Foxy and Michael return to their apartment, unaware Eddie and Bunyan are observing them. Foxy enters the apartment first looking for Link, when she sees the news article in Link's drawing and fears the worst. Michael gets to the apartment, but is suddenly shot multiple times by Eddie. Michael falls into the apartment and dies in Foxy's arms. Link and Deb are at her apartment and Foxy turns up pretending to ask him for help. Link goes to open the door, but Foxy barges in, letting off shots at Link. She threatens to kill him for what he did to Michael. Link pretends not to know anything, but Foxy almost shoots his ear off. Link then tells Foxy about Catherine Wall and the modeling agency she runs to cover her real operations. Foxy then trashes the apartment and warns him to leave town before either she or Catherine gets to him. Foxy turns up at Catherine's modeling agency under the name Misty Cotton and gets a meeting with Catherine herself. Foxy cuts to the chase. She knows what kind of business Catherine is really in with these women and is prepared to do anything and anyone as long as the money is right. Catherine is impressed hearing this and makes a phone call to get Foxy started right away. She warns Foxy not to cross her and tells her to show up at her home the following day. Foxy arrives at Catherine's home and immediately catches the eyes of Elias as she begins to change her clothes. Catherine then introduces Foxy to Claudia, as the two are supposed to meet Judge Fenton and convince him to release two of Catherine's gangsters. If they fail, they will be sent to a house in Haiti to work. Just then, Claudia is approached by her husband Willard and their son. He is planning to leave town for work and wants Claudia to leave with him tonight. Bunyan and Elias try to turn him away, eventually having to beat him down before sending him away. On the way, Foxy tells Claudia she has a plan that would be more fun. They arrive at the apartment where Judge Fenton greets them. He takes the two to a room where he immediately suggests clearing Catherine's gangsters' names if he has a good time. Foxy begins to list off all the terrible things the men were accused of, shocking even the judge. They then push the judge into the hallway where he stumbles into a frightened woman. Some older women passing think he is assaulting the woman, and they jump him. After the incident, Claudia breaks down crying, knowing the trouble they are now in, but Foxy promises to take her to her apartment to hide out. Catherine gets news that her gangsters were sent off to prison and the judge is now angry at them. Catherine suspects that the new girl Misty must have double-crossed them, and Elias plans to have his men look for them. Foxy returns home one evening to find Claudia missing. Claudia has gone to a nearby bar to have a drink and clear her mind. The bartender recognizes her, telling a woman, Bobby, to keep her inside the bar. Bobby then goes over and tries to chat with Claudia. Foxy goes searching for Claudia and finds her inside the bar. Bobby tries to stop Foxy but gets a barstool to the face. She is then surrounded by other women who want revenge for Bobby, and a brutal fight begins. In the chaos, Foxy and Claudia manage to escape but are spotted by Eddie and Bunyan, who begin to give chase. While Claudia runs, Foxy tries to hold the men off. She beats Bunyan before hitting Eddie over the head, but she is eventually captured. Bunyan wants to stab her with a bottle, but Elias stops him. Foxy is taken to a location where she is held captive under Catherine's watch. Elias has found out her real name is Foxy Brown and that she was Dalton's girl and Link is her brother. Foxy doesn't care and warns Catherine she will get her revenge on her. Bunyan wants to kill her now, but Catherine stops him, planning to send Foxy to a place called the ranch. Foxy wakes up strapped to a bed, all drugged up. In another room, she sees a man sleeping, while outside another is collecting fuel. Foxy sneaks out of the apartment, but the sleeping man wakes and drags her back inside. He ties her back to the bed, and the other man re-enters the apartment and gets her high again to stop her from fighting back. After a few hours, Foxy reawakens. There is no one around, so she uses her mouth to pick up a nearby razor and uses it to cut her restraints. The men are all occupied, so she grabs some wires from the closet and twists them into a makeshift weapon. She sneaks into the kitchen and grabs a gas hose outside and begins to siphon gas into a pot. One man comes upon her, but Foxy attacks him with the hangers before throwing gasoline on the other. She then sets the man in the house ablaze before escaping to a nearby truck. Elias gets news of the explosion and just thinks that the men must have messed up. After the phone call, Catherine begins to suspect that Foxy may be involved and urges Elias to find her and kill her. He then calls Eddie, and they prepare to go out and get their revenge. Link hasn't left town and is still at Deb's apartment. 
he hears the doorbell, and it is Eddie, who claims to have some stuff for him. Link is enticed to open the door, but Eddie and Elias barge in, demanding to know where Foxy is, but Elias accidentally shoots him dead. Eddie then kills Deb brutally to shut her up. Foxy hears about her brother's death from Oscar and is very disappointed in Link. She is at the community watch meeting where the men are deliberating whether to help Foxy out with her quest for vengeance. The men are hesitant to help Foxy out as this is not in their neighborhood. Foxy tells them that she wants justice for her brother and her lover, as it could have been any one of their family members. They don't want to take part in revenge, but Foxy tells them to take care of the justice while she handles the revenge. Foxy finds Elias's pilot in a restaurant and entices him to come over and speak to her. She had overheard him telling a story about flying and tells him she has never been in an airplane before. The pilot falls for the trick and invites her to join him on his next trip. Elias is preparing to pick up a shipment personally, and Catherine is worried as she thinks Foxy could do anything at this point. Elias comforts her, promising to leave some guys to keep an eye on her. Foxy joins the pilot for his trip, and the two make plans to get busy after he's done with his deal. Meanwhile, Elias arrives at the airfield where two cops working for him let him through. He arrives at the meeting spot where Tedesco's men are also there, and soon the plane comes into view. Before the plane lands, the pilot tells Foxy to stay inside while he does the deal. The pilot goes to hand over the cash to Mr. Tedesco. Meanwhile, a van pulls up to the gate, and Oscar and the community watch groups surround the cops. Inside the plane, Foxy starts the engines and goes after Bunyan, who runs in a straight line before he is killed. Foxy then crashes the plane into the building, killing Tedesco. The community watch group takes on the remaining men while Foxy goes after Elias. He gets to the gate and spots the community watch members who manage to corner him. The men then grab Elias and cut off his junk. Catherine is at her apartment when Foxy enters carrying a bag, but Eddie and another man hold her at gunpoint. They take the bag from her but are shocked to find a jar with Elias' junk inside. Foxy then sneakily pulls a pistol from her hair and kills Eddie and the other man. Catherine pulls a knife, but Foxy shoots her in the shoulder, dropping her. Catherine cries and begs for her to kill her too, but Foxy refuses to give her an easy death and wants her to suffer just like she did. Foxy leaves and gets into a car with Oscar, and the two drive away. 